Welcome to Sedona, Arizona. In this video, I'll be sharing two beautiful hikes in the iconic Sedona Red Rocks. On my way to this outdoor paradise, I got to drive through one of the most scenic Red Rock Canyons. It stretches from Flagstaff all the way down to Sedona. This 30 mile stretch of road is probably one of my favorite parts of the entire drive. Sedona is located in central Arizona. It's about a two hour drive north of Phoenix. Driving through that canyon is one of the most scenic canyons ever. I remember driving through it the first time a couple years ago. I just remember my jaw being like on the floor the entire time I drove through. By the time I found a spot to camp, it was dark and I quickly fell asleep in the peaceful desert landscape. Good morning. I am currently outside of Sedona, Arizona, and I am preparing for a big, long day of hikes. It's about 6.45 local time, and I'm just starting the Robber's Roost Trail. So far, this trail is just like an ATV road. I'm hoping that it'll turn a single track soon, but for now it's just walking on this very rocky ATV road. Feels like spring down here right now. It's cold, but I can tell things are starting to grow, which makes me so excited. Oh, I love the spring. As I walked, the sun started to rise in the east, shining behind the red rock cliffs and illuminating this beautiful desert landscape. The Robber's Roost Trail is about three and a half miles from the point where I started, which was as far as I was comfortable taking my Subaru. If you have an ATV or an off-road vehicle, you can cut out over two miles of this hike by starting at the actual trailhead. Legend has it that bandits would retreat to this remote spot after committing crimes in the late 19th century. The sun is just starting to rise on the mountains that are all around me. And it is so beautiful. This is probably my favorite part of the day especially on a spring morning. Okay, it's not all the way spring, but it feels like spring right now. But this place is amazing. It's so peaceful, so quiet, and now we're getting a little bit of sun. I took the wrong turn, by the way. Do not take that gate. Just continue up the road. Shouldn't be too much further. Should be just over in those red rocks. Oh, what a beautiful morning. So this is the official trailhead. If you're able to make it all the way up there with your ATV. Obviously I just walked all of it. I think it was a little bit more than a mile. Now I'm gonna go down and right back up. Oh. I was getting so hot, so I had to take off my Patagonia jacket way too much. I thought it was going to be so much colder than it actually is. It's 
awesome. Wow, it's super intense right now. But it's pretty. Literally walking straight into it. The best time to hike robber's roost is in the spring or the fall when the temperatures are more mild. The summer can be extremely hot and winter may bring snowy or icy conditions on the trail. There it is. So cool. This trail is pretty epic right now. Wow. I felt incredibly lucky to have this place all to myself, especially as the sun just started to shine on these ancient ruins. Because of its location, this hike is a less popular hike in Sedona. And for that point alone, this was one of my favorite hikes that I did this day. There was a quiet stillness to the world. I couldn't help but think about the people who inhabited this cave and how they must have lived. The Sinagua people thrived in this area from 500 to 1400 AD. These people were known for their craftsmanship in pottery and masonry. I'm gonna make some coffee in here and just soak up my time. This place is absolutely gorgeous. The Sinagua people built elaborate cliff dwellings, such as this one, in pueblos and irrigation systems throughout this whole region. it is this morning. I just finished up at the cave. I met another couple that hiked in maybe like 30 minutes after me. And I wanted to fly my drone here, but regulations say no. It's funny though, if you hike down to that pond right there, then you can take off from that area, but you can't take off from this area. I may venture down by the pond to fly my drone, hopefully get some cool footage, but we'll see. I am sipping on my coffee as I make my way down. I wanted to give them plenty of time in the cave to explore it and enjoy it without me being there heading down. It's been a gorgeous morning here so far, but I can tell that I'm going to need to put on some sunscreen soon because that hot Arizona sun is out. It's not hot yet, but it's intense, <laughs> that's for sure especially when my body's used to being inside all winter. So heading back to the car, <sighs> grateful for this beautiful morning. I was thinking about what a morning routine would be like for the people who lived there. I wonder if they would have a fire and gather local herbs and have a morning hot cup of tea or something. I know our lives in the modern society are so different from what they probably experienced back then, but I think there are probably still similarities. It was also really cool seeing there's holes and like um, smooth indents in the bottom of the cave surface, and it looks like that's where they probably ground up certain things to make food or tinctures or medicines or whatever, and 
that was really cool to see also. Kind of fun walking with my coffee. Reminds me of my coffee walks at home with my husband. Okay, so it's 8.16 a.m. Heading back to the car now. And I have two more hikes planned today, maybe three, depending on my timing and how quickly I can hike them and enjoy them and experience them. One of these hikes I've tried before, but I wasn't able to complete it. So I'm excited to complete it today. It's a pretty iconic spot here in Sedona. So hopefully there are not too many crowds. It is a Saturday and yeah, so we'll see how this goes. Every so often I have to stop and take a sip of my coffee. Which is very cold now, by the way. <laughs> Cause I, it's so rocky, I can't walk and drink at the same time. Coffee and sunshine. And a walk, first thing in the morning. Is there anything better? I've never fully trusted the return home feature on my drone. I set this up to, so it could take off of this, but I don't think it's gonna land there. Yeah, it was gonna land like, you know, 50 feet from me. That's crazy. Let's see if I can get it to land right on the Bose headphone case. Didn't quite make it onto the case, but it was close, that's for sure. Finished my coffee and ready for the day. <laughs> hey there, I'm just interrupting for one second to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video Discover Cars. Discover Cars is an online car rental company that is able to offer discounted prices on car rentals. They work with over 500 different car rental companies and negotiate prices with them and that's how they're able to provide you with the best deal possible. It is so simple to book on discovercars.com. All you have to do is click the link in the description of this video. That will take you to their website. You'll plug in the location where you want to pick up the car, the date you're traveling, and then you'll choose the type of car you want. They have so many different options here. They have anything from like economy cars, SUVs, vans, convertibles, sports cars, whatever you need, they will have it. They also offer a full coverage package, which gives you peace of mind during your vacation or throughout the time that you have the car rental. Discovercars.com is completely transparent with how much your car rental will cost. There are no hidden fees, all you have to do is book online, bring a voucher when you travel, and pick up the car that you selected. So if you know that you're going to be traveling within the next six months to a year and you know that you will need a car rental, be sure to click the link in the description of this video and it will take you to the Discover Cars website so you can get a great deal on a car rental. All right, let's get back to hiking in Sedona. Just started the trail for the birthing cave, I believe it's called. Shouldn't be too long, maybe uh, two miles. And this trailhead has a bunch of other trails linked to it. You can go all over in this area. But my main priority is going to the birthing cave and maybe exploring a little bit further than that. Like I said, I have other hikes I want to do. So we'll just see how the day unfolds. So far, this is a super high traffic trail. There were a ton of cars in the parking lot, so kind of expected it. Not very scenic yet. We got a little peak of the red rock up there and the white mountains. I am super hungry right now. Brought tons of snacks, so I'm eating Pop-Tarts for breakfast. Breakfast of champions. 
Just kidding, it's not. Super sugary, full of crap, but I need calories right now. So you gotta do what you gotta do on the trail. Okay, so I just got to a split in the trail. There's a trail this way, and there's a trail this way. And I just looked at my map, and it is not the way that says trail. It's up and over this little hill. So if you're wanting to do the birthing cave, now you know. a little bit windy today which makes hiking in this loose sand not ideal at all because it blows up everywhere in your face but it's a lot less windy today than it was yesterday driving in it was scary driving here yesterday <laughs> that I was gonna be blown off the road like several times Okay, we just finished up at the birthing cave and the hike was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. One mile up, probably one mile back to the car, if that. But this is one of those hikes where the pictures online make it look different than it actually is. So keep that in mind. And the sandstone up there is super slippery. So be very, very careful. So if you see a lot of photos from this spot, I'll show you what that looks like here. And if you compare that to what it actually looks like, they're very different, which is kind of sad. And I really hate when spots or hikes or viewpoints like this are different in person than they are in photos. I feel like with social media, photos hype up a spot so much because you can capture it in the perfect way at the perfect time of day with just like the most ideal circumstances and then if you go to the spot at any time of the day on a regular day then you just don't quite get that experience so that is something to be aware of with this hike it's not what it seems I see why this is a popular hike. The trail is so easy, so short, but the views are just not quite what I was looking for, and that's okay. My next hike for today is going to have some pretty spectacular views, hopefully. Never done this hike before, but from the pictures online, it looks beautiful. So we'll see if it's the same in person. Oh, this trail is dog friendly. I've seen lots of dogs on it so far which is kind of surprising because at the very end you hike up to the cave it's a little bit scrambly but i think they have to be leashed every dog i've seen has been on a leash okay back in the car crossing off this one you can see that. Got a little list of trails that I want to hike. I don't think I will hike all of them, but it's a goal. Okay, now I need to find my phone and find the next trail. 
There are so many incredible hikes that I would love to experience here in Sedona. I will absolutely be back in the near future to spend more time exploring this incredible place. I do have another hike that I did later this day, but I felt like this hike needed a video of its own to fully share this experience. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss next week's video where I hike to the tallest point in Sedona and face some of the most brutal winds that I have ever experienced hiking. This is crazy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.